Welcome to our lesson for today. We are focusing on systems technology and we are looking at introduction to computers. Now we are going to be looking at understanding computers as well as computing. Now our first uh, intro into this lesson is to understand what is a system and what is it used for. Right. And then when you look at computers and their users, there's a lot of users for a computer, but you need to understand how to use a computer in order to know what it's used for. Now we're going to look at this uh, uh, short scenario where we just talk about um, computers and how we can find a way in terms of determining the users of a computer. Now here we're going to look at technology and how it has changed our lives. So this short paragraph of mine says here, Technology has changed our lives, and a uh, computer is increasing the change, and it's raising new issues that society has to deal with. Now, for us to prepare for this change, we need to know what is systems technology and what operations can it be used for. Now, we first need to determine what a computer is and explore its uses. Now, whenever we look at a computer, you need to understand what is a computer generally and what can it be used for. But before you can even know what you can use it for, we need to find out the different types of users because people don't use a computer for the same reasons. Right, then in this slide of mine, I've got different types that we can just list and then we can look at the different users so that you can be able to see what all these different users can use the computers for. Now, what is a computer? A computer is your electronic device that can process data, accept information, store information. Now, obviously, all of these devices are meant to obviously do a certain purpose at the end. But now we've got different types and we've got different users who would want to use a specific computer in order to achieve a specific purpose. Now, what does a computer would really do other than you know, accepting and processing and storing data. It obviously needs to follow instructions, and those instructions, we get them from the software that has to be installed in your computer. Now, this process, whenever you're using a computer where you get information being in, uh, in inserted into your computer, then it gets to be processed, then you get to store it. This process is known as information processing cycle. Right, now that you understand what is a computer and what is it used for, now we're going to look at different users. Now, why do we use computers? Now, before you even look at why we use computers, there is a lot of reasons. Obviously, these reasons would depend on the user. Now, the first user, we have a personal user where someone would use a computer as just, um, you know, um, limited office office tasks where you'd get internet banking at home, you'd get social networking where you would Skype, etc. So that is a personal use of a computer. And then we also have an office user. Now this office user, which we sometimes call small office or home own, uh, users, now these people actually are people who would use a better um, computer in terms of the the level so it's much better and much uh, more um, advanced than a personal computer where you can deal with um, a bit of accounting a bit of billing their databases with clients or even um, working with electronic documents and um, saving some information there and then another user we have a mobile user now a mobile user is basically someone who would want to be using a computer but be on the road. So now this user does not necessarily have to be at home or at the office because obviously the most um, of their time they would spend on the road, but they still want to have access to email, access to um, you know receiving phone calls, and be able to re receive information wherever they are. And then lastly, the user that we're going to look at is a power user. Now, power users mostly would be your scientists, people who do video editing, engineers, 
you know, where people would want to, you know, generally use this computer for bigger purposes and even sometimes gamers because when you, whenever you're a gamer, you need to have a powerful computer. So these are the types of users and now with these users, we now can be able to see the users of a computer because remember, each user would have a different use of the computer. Now, when we use computers, we use them so that they can help us to, the first one that we can look at is to save time. Now, imagine if you did not have a computer and everything had to be written down, or all the processes, statements, databases had to be actually uh, uh, done manually. It would obviously take up a lot of time. So with the computer use, now we are able to save time in terms of labor as well as other resources. Secondly, now computers have helped us in order to communicate. Now in the olden days, you know, we used to have limited communication, but now there's vast communication types where you are able to even send instant messages, emails, even if you can't even make a, a phone call, you can just send an SMS and the person will be able to, uh, to reply. And then the last one that we're going to look at is doing dangerous tasks. Now this is very important because you can imagine if scientists have to test for um, uh, a specific uh, drug or have to test for a dangerous experiment where they have to check if um, an explosion would go on, if it's triggered by whatever that they want to explore. You can imagine that can be very dangerous. But now if you have computers, you can actually use them in order to um, achieve that purpose. So those are a few things that we had to look at, even though there's more, but we have time to just look at these ones. Now we're going to focus nextly on... Um, what um, we define as computers, which is different types of computers. Now, the different types of computers are classified into two categories. We have one, dedicated computers. Now, your dedicated computers are meant to achieve or to perform one specific function. Now, for example, here I have an ATM where your ATM would achieve or would have to function in terms of just dealing with money and getting transactions, but it obviously focuses on one specific function. And then another type is your multi-purpose computers. Now, multi-purpose computers would obviously include your, mo your mobile computers and non-mobile computers. Now, mobile computers would include your tablets, your laptops, as well as your m uh, smartphones. And then your mobile computer would obviously include your PCs, where you cannot obviously be on the road with a PC. So that is why we say it's a non-mobile computer. Now these are your computers that can perform more than one specific function. So they are meant to do many tasks. And you can see, obviously, by the examples there of your mobile, you can do a lot of things with the laptops. You can do a lot of things with the smartphone. For example, with the smartphone, you can take pictures, you can make calls, you can uh, take videos, and you can uh, surf the internet, and you can also send an email. Now, this is just um, our intro into computing, and I hope you did enjoy. And that is it for our lesson. Thank you.